Hey everyone, welcome to this uh, radio video. I thought I'd show you a little bit what I do when I want to listen to amateur radio digital signals, for example. Um, of course, first I'll fire up FLDG on my laptop computer and I'll tune a frequency. For example, here 14070 is a frequency well known for BPSK31 signals. So 14070 upper sideband, pretty much all BPSK you can hear. Uh, on the 20 meter band is there. Once I do that, I'll simply go to the computer now and check it out. So here's the transmission. All the little vertical spikes that, the, that are in the waterfall are BPSK signals. So I'll you know click on one of them and look at the text. So for example here we have a conversation hope you have fun with BPSK31. I know I have since about 2000 on and off. I belong to P0DXS 070 Club. They're a great bunch with lots of contests, uh, endorsements and other activities. So uh, it's really nice. You know, you have these, some have, you know, big long conversations. Others will have more um, contact-like conversations where they'll just, you know, have contacts with different other stations. It's always nice. So every time you see these vertical spikes, you can jump to another station and just check what the station is about. So here you have a station that's probably N4HYS that just wanted. I'll try to find a uh, really a contact. Um, if I don't hear a lot of stations like I'd like to listen to, then I'll go around different frequencies of the amateur band for the same mode. So for example, 14.070 is a 20 meter band BPSK. 21.070 also BPSK for the 15 meter amateur band. So I'll tune that one. I'll check for the spikes in the waterfall and just click on one of the spikes to see if I can decode any interesting transmission. So here, HW copy means how's the copy. Is asking the other station what is my signal like how is it decoding BTU means back to you and then he signs off giving is uh, contact call so for example KC9 WPS is the station he's talking to so back to you KC9 WPS and then DE means from DL1 FAM, meaning that the signal I just decoded comes from DL1 FAM. Now the question you might ask yourself is, how do I know what's that? All you have to do is go into QRZ.com and just enter DL1 FAM. And it's a guy in Germany. And you have all of his info address and uh, you know some stations on QRZ.com have really nice pages. So here there's always the first call is always the call of the station you're talking to. By courtesy you always give your call last when you're talking with someone. So here it says all okay dear old man Scott Thanks for QSO, so thank you for the contact in BPSK31, which is the digital mode we are at. All the best, 73, meaning best regards, and good luck. And he says from DL1FAM, TU for thank you, and SK means silent key, means he's going to stop transmitting. So let's see, there's another very strong one here. Let's click on that one and see what he's saying. So you see that all the spikes down and sometimes you know when the band is really crowded you might have many 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 different vertical signals here. So this one is KK4 NNH. Once again you want to know what it is you go on QRZ.com and you enter his call KK4 NNH and this is Stefan in Martin Tennessee. Uh, and he's got actually more info than others, so he's got uh, a picture of himself, he's got uh, kind of a little bio of, uh, you know, his amateur radio life, some pictures of antennas and some uh, 
awards that he's won and so on. So, uh, you know, some of the pages are really cool to, to watch on QRZ.com. So here's W7PAQ from KK4NNH. Like I said, the station transmitting usually always gives this call last. So meaning that it is KK4NNH that we hear now uh, when I decode. W7PAQ is the station he is talking to, actually. So that's how you really know. Now, what I'm decoding probably very weakly here is that W7PAQ, but it's kind of a little weak, so it's not a very good copy, actually. So it depends on the station. I'm just going to unplug the power supply from my computer. Sometimes it actually makes a little less noise, and you, you can see in the waterfall there's a little less noise. And uh, here, it's decoding a little better actually since I've uh, took out that power supply. So that's how I'll do it. You know, I'll go around the amateur radio bands, tune signals, and uh, check out what's on. I like DXing, so I like to have stations from really far away. Let's check that peak here at the top. Okay, CQ. CQ from a station called DO2 AMS. CQ means I'm calling all stations, anyone out there that wants to talk. Here's call sign. So here's CQ CQ calling all stations from DO2 AMS. DO2 AMS is from Germany. It's a guy called Lars Helm, and he's in Germany. So he's sending out a call, waiting for an answer. Does somebody else want to talk to me? So, uh, for example, if you're an amateur radio operator and want to do some BPSK, well, of course, you would answer to this station because he's looking for some station to talk to. A lot of stations will exchange mostly um, just, you know, the basic credentials, uh, signal quality, um, and the call sign, and, uh, you know, what type of um, antenna and radio and maybe sometimes the software so here is calling calling waiting for a reply as you see there are other BPSK signals I'm here that's where I clicked actually where there's a little red line but these are other signals including a very strong one here which is the uh, KK4 station that I've heard a little earlier one of the problems when a very strong station shows up and your radio is uh, your radio's uh, filters are a little too wide is the fact that when a very strong station shows up often it kind of uh, mutes a little bit the other ones around it so sometimes if you're just using you know a basic filter like on my icom I don't have a very small filter for uh, for the audio it is a large 1.8 kilohertz filter for SSB so I hear all the BBSK stations together, and but you know many amateur radio um, rigs will actually have specific you know filters that are just wide enough for BPSK, and you'll be able to just tune one signal at a time, uh, which is uh, always better. So let's go down here and check this one. Let's see what he's transmitting. So this is probably is uh, kind of a list that he's sending out. So OS means operating system, Windows 7 Black Edition. So he says, sorry, still working on macros. Macros are pre-programmed uh, text that very often station use. And it says BTU, so back to you, KF9KV. And this is from AC6W. And, you know, you end with a K to say, well, it's your turn. Kind of saying I, I'm ending and it's your turn to transmit. So AC6W from QRZ.com It's Bryce S. Lane and he's in Visalia, California. So California station here. And uh, you know you just tune around, go around. My favorite frequencies for BPSK is um, 28120 for the 10 meter band, 21070 in the 15 meter band, that's where I am right now. Um, 
fifth 14 0 for the 20 meter band uh, there's the um, 40 meter band I believe it's uh, there's some around 7035 7040 and there's some also on 7070 so just tune around there uh, but these are probably the favorite ones are around there you know I rarely hear digital modes that are um, strong enough to go over my noise level in the low frequencies like you know the 20 meter uh, the 80 meter band sorry like 3 megahertz or the 160 meter band so that's pretty much all I'll do it I'll just click one of the one of the BPSK signals that shows up like this and look for what station it is so here is N5 LCP once again you use the QRZ.com website and you just check out what station it is this is a guy com called Laurent C Palmi Bene I don't know what uh, part Tim Bene so um, he's in Youngsville Louisiana so it's pretty cool you know you check out you listen to these stations try to find some DX I really uh, like actually listening to stations that are far away like before I made this video I actually was listening to a station which was RN2F in uh, Kaliningrad Russia I like to have you know digital signals coming from really far away so here is F5CCX so UW5EFR is the station he's talking to F5CCX is the station that just said SK meaning is ending transmission and that was a station from France F5CCX so this is Bruno Tofolo in France so it's really cool you know you just tune around check out their waterfall for the BPSK31 signals and uh, the hardest part is trying to find uh, and understand mostly the you know amateur radio abbreviations that you can see when you're looking at a uh, signal and uh, you know what if you can understand most of the abbreviations and what it means when you're looking at a BPSK31 signal for example you will understand um, pretty much everything in every digital mode that is it is pretty much always the same type of signal so here's our station kk 4 nnh that was a little earlier let's check this other one w7min you often you know i i say that by listening to the amateur stations you, you really get to a point where you really get um, the hang of you know catching the uh, amateur call signs and uh, understanding what you are actually reading of course it is fun when there's two guys you know having a real chatter on digital modes that's always fun you know I uh, especially when you get both because of propagation very often you'll receive one station but not necessarily both station at a certain location and uh, but you know boy it's just so fun sometimes I, uh, I have a lot of fun you find yourself a BPSK signal and you hear both stations and they're having a real big conversation about you know everything and nothing and whatever talking about the radios the weather or whatever it's always fun you know you just leave it there and read their chatter on the digital modes uh, that's something that's also that I like to do so please, KK, so this one is probably waiting for uh, a call. Here it goes, F5CCX from KK4NNH. So here it goes. These two are going to have a contact. Hopefully the F5 station heard the KK4 station. <coughs> Sorry. So here's a little conversation. Hi, Charles. Thanks for the call. Reply. Then he's got his bio. Name Bruno. Bruno. QTH. Igny in France. 10 kilometers south of Paris. His locator. So LOC 
means locator. Sometimes it's written in full. Means JN18CR. Why? The amateur radio world map is divided in these little grids, these little squares, and they all have a locator. So JN18CR on the amateur radio grid map will actually pinpoint approximately where the station's transmitting from in the world. Then he's got a report, report 599. 599 is a great signal, basically. It means you're a great copy, great signal. And then he's ending with uh, house copy and A4Q from F5CCX. And you know, when it ends like this, always remember that the station that ID is the last. In this case, F5CCX is the station you are listening to. So this is the station from France. So I uh, hope that this little tour of what I do and uh, when I listen to amateur radio digital signals helps you guys that are kind of uh, maybe newbies or even, you know, uh, newbie in the amateur radio um, hobby to understand a little more what these abbreviations mean and what, you know, a conversation that you might see will mean. So here, once again, uh, it says QSL 100, that means probably this, okay, I understood everything about what you said. Uh, here's the station info that he's sending, so radio is an SD, it's kind of uh, maybe a little problematic there, but uh, it says 30W, probably 30 watts. Uh, software HRD and radio deluxe plus DM 780 which is the I'm radio deluxe digital mode software and tele antenna is a four element three band antenna and uh, finally says my QSL is okay via eqsl.cc HRD log and um, doesn't say a lot more uh, usually for QSL you'll see eqsl meaning that he's got an eqsl available by internet or by email. Uh, other ways, HRD log, which is a way to get QSLs. There's uh, LOTW, you might see, which is uh, Logbook of the World, which is another site where you can actually get your EQSL, basically, uh, where, you know, the station, it means that the station will actually have an entry for the contact in Logbook of the World. And sometimes you'll see Bureau. Bureau means that uh, it you can have a paper QSL via what we call a bureau. Um, a bureau for QSLs is uh, basically a place where uh, amateur stations will have their QSLs sent from because by sending in bulk uh, usually it costs less. So instead of sending directly from his home, for example, um, they'll be sending from the bureau. So that's pretty much how it works. I hope this video was uh, educational for all of you out there, you know, wanting to uh, decode any types of digital signal in the amateur bands and um, understand what's being said is also important. Um, that's always fun to know at least what they're saying because uh, with all these amateur radio abbreviations, you um, it's easy to get lost and not really understand what's being said. So, hope you enjoyed the video.